Welcome to this month's Heart Bunch video. Uh, we are uh, the Heart Initiative with Utah State University Extension. And in this video, we're going to talk about how to manage anxiety with helpful coping strategies. So I'm going to turn it over to Alicia to talk about what generalized anxiety disorder is. And then we'll get into some helpful coping strategies. Thanks, Gabby. Uh, generalized anxiety order, or GAD, it usually involves a constant feeling of anxiety or fear. The anxiety is clinically significant, which means that it's more than just worrying about occasional stressful events most of us experience in our lives. GAD is an ongoing experience of frequent anxiety that may last for months or even years. So what causes generalized anxiety disorder? The symptoms of GAD come from a complex interaction between biology and the environment. Some factors may include genetics, brain function and chemistry, individualized personality, development, and one's perception of threats. So let's talk about some of the signs and symptoms that go along with generalized anxiety disorder. Um, there, you may have a sense of restlessness, being on edge or wound up, difficulty concentrating, irritability, being easily fatigued, headaches, muscle aches, stomach aches, or unexplained pains. You may have trouble sleeping or difficulty controlling feelings of worry, uh, sweating, nausea, or diarrhea. The important thing to remember is that if these symptoms last for six months or more, a person may be experiencing GAD. If you have questions, talk to your health, your healthcare team or your healthcare provider. There are evidence-based treatments that work very well for managing GAD, as well as strategies that can help you cope. So now let's talk about some of those strategies. Thanks. Um, the first one is mindful breathing. This is a very powerful tool. So if you are aware of your breathing and you focus on your breathing, it turns our thoughts away from anxious thoughts and we focus on the moment. There are a lot of different ways to do mindful breathing, such as infinity breathing, box breathing, which I really like, is where you take a breath in for four, five seconds, breath out, or hold your breath for four or five, and then breathe out for four or five. So you're doing that box. Controlled breathing, and there's a ton of other options. So if you're feeling anxious, you can try this one out. The grounding technique that works really well for adults and kids is the 54321 method. This helps you turn your focus because you are intentionally using all of your senses to acknowledge your surroundings and bring you back to the present moment. So I have a kiddo that's been diagnosed with anxiety and this tool works really well for him, but I do this most for kids who have woken up for, um, from a nightmare and are kind of panicked and disoriented. And so I do this in the middle of the night a lot with my kids and I usually have them name five things that they can see. Sometimes you have to turn on the light so they can look around their room and four things they can touch. And usually that's a pillow or a blanket or sometimes even like a pet, like a dog or a cat. I have them do three things that they can hear. So sometimes that's a sound machine or maybe like sprinklers outside. And then two things they can smell. That one's a little bit harder, but sometimes it's clean laundry or some Play-Doh or something in their room. And then I do one thing you can taste, which is hard, usually at nighttime, but I like to keep sour candy close by. And that's usually a really good one to kind of ground them and to laugh about and just pull them out of that moment. Very good. Thanks, Sadie. Um, I'm going to talk about progressive muscle relaxation. Um, when we're anxious, the muscles in our body will tighten. When we use this technique, we can relax the muscles, which will ease the feeling of anxiety. So when we talk about starting this, we talk about starting at our feet, right at our head, either way, um, and begin tensing those muscles. Hold them for a count of maybe 10 seconds, um, and then release that. Then you work through all the muscles from the top to the bottom. Um, allow yourself to... Feel that relax, sorry, feel that release as you let those muscles go. Um, it allows you to feel better. Um, a simple thing to do, it takes you maybe 10 minutes to do throughout your entire body. It can really make a big difference in reducing that anxiety um, as you're going through that process. The next one we'll talk about is exercise. Obviously, exercise um, is very important as it helps us burn out the adrenaline caused by the fight, flight, and freeze response that we feel or we are anxious. Um, exercising helps distract our minds 
and brings us to the present. So it's a neurochemical basis. Um, it's been shown to be really effective in lots of different ways um, using, again, cardio resistance exercise, flexibility, and balance. And all those on um, the PowerPoint are great things to try. Um, and sometimes try them together and see what works for you. Wonderful. Next, we're going to talk just a little bit about self-compassion and being kind to ourselves, really just treating ourselves like we would treat a friend or a loved one that we care about. And that means that our self-talk or the way that we talk to ourselves is more positive and compassionate. And this way we can be really kind to ourselves and thinking of previous times that we've been through something and gotten through it can actually help us as well. And that's reminding ourselves that we can do hard things, we've done it before, and this time we can get through this again. And that can be very helpful for people to just talk more compassionately and be kind to ourselves can help us overcome anxiety that we might feel in any given moment. If you want to learn more or get some exercises, there are some self-guided ones at selfcompassion.org. And the next thing we'll talk about is mindfulness or meditation. This is when you're focusing on the present moment being here in the period of time that you are and sitting where you are, right? Leaving the past behind, leaving the future behind, and just focusing on the present moment. It can really help us take in, uh, you know, what's going on around us and get rid of some of those thoughts of, well, what if this happens? What if that happens? A lot of times with anxiety, we get stuck in those what ifs. So mindfulness and meditation can help us be present and keep that overactive brain of ours kind of focused on one thing. And one thing that I like to say with mindfulness is it's not all sitting very quietly in a room. You can play things like Simon Says for mindfulness. That will get you mindful, but also kind of playful. So don't be afraid to make your mindfulness something that works for you and get rid of that overactive thinking and let your mind be occupied with something that you enjoy and get rid of that worry zone. If you want to learn more about that, you can visit the UC San Diego Center for Mindfulness with lots of cool activities. Next up, we have journaling. Journaling really um, can be a powerful tool for, for some people, uh, you know, being able to enjoy writing and put their thoughts and feelings down. Um, journaling helps us process and manage our emotions um, and it puts those things in writing. Sometimes we might feel like we have all this stuff bottled up in our heads and we just need to get it out, need to get it on paper. So this might be this might be something that, that could be really useful for you. Um, and it can provide that relief, that sense of relief that it's not just bottled up and kind of stuck in our heads or, you know, in our brains. So there's different ways of journaling. There's no really one, you know, you know, great, the greatest way. It's kind of, it's kind of like mindfulness, right? So it's, it's what, what works for you, the kind of journaling that you would like to do and, and what works for you and, and your personality and kind of what you're feeling, what you're feeling in the moment. Um, so you could, you could write about whatever comes to your head. You could write about whatever is actually causing the anxiety and, you know, talk about that and journal about that. And you could also do gratitude journaling, which is, you know, where you where you talk about uh, things that that you're grateful for. The final strategy that we're going to talk about is doing something fun. This is really simple, but I think the biggest catch here is that we need to be intentional and make time to do something fun for ourselves. And we all have our own hobbies that we enjoy. When we do something that we enjoy, it switches our mindset from stress to relaxation. Uh, hobbies help to reduce anxiety levels and improve our happiness. It's important to remember that the examples we shared today are, are just some of many coping strategies that can help someone cope with stress or anxiety. And then it's important to remember if you need to, to contact your healthcare provider. Um, thank you all for tuning in to this month's video. We appreciate um, you listening in. You can find our heart content across all these platforms. You can subscribe to our newsletter if this is something that's helping you and you want more information about. So we hope you have a great day.